exact length is Turing complete. We just need to notice two simple behaviors in the game mechanics. In the first one, the crane snaps two whatever's closest to it. This way, we can select card operation behaviors via the position of the crane. In the second simple behavior, we can set the position of the crane via card operations. And that's all we need to form a closed loop. Here, we can affect card operations using card operations. Fantastic. So here, we basically represent one bit of information. It's either in an up state where wood is transported, or in the down state where stone is transported. We can chain multiple bits. Here, the right bit initially is in the down state, but the left bit is on the down state, which sets the right bit into the up state via outputting stone into the lower stack. So this is an assignment operation. However, there's a slight issue with this design. We don't have a way to systematically remove cards from the bit mechanism, as the number of cards inside the piles increase. The entire mechanism jitters, and we, we apparently yield a random number generator. Jokes aside, we immediately have some applications. Here's a plank magnet collecting an ever-growing pile of planks until the, t the pile grows so long that it pushes the lumberjack into the crane mechanism. We'll watch that closely later again. Now let's say we used some planks. We need more planks now. So we put the lumberjack back, producing wood. This, on the right, is a simpler mechanism where only when we have too many pieces of wood do we initiate the sawmill. Alright, as we have more and more planks, as I was saying, we will have more and more planks until the lumberjack enters the receptive region of that crane. Maybe one more plank? That's when the crane disengages the lumberjack from the lumber camp, seizing the wood production. Well, as I was saying, that mechanism has the problem of not being able to remove cards from the bits. So later I settled down on a simpler solution. Using card flow to represent states. Here's an OR gate. It's just like in Minecraft Redstone. You just join the pathways. Consequentially, from either one of the inputs, as long as you have signal, you will have a signal on the output. Here we're looking at what I believe is a NOT gate? Yes. This is a NOT gate. Uh, here is the input variable. Here's a constant, actually. The constant is set to true. So the idle behavior of this NOT gate is to output true since there's always sand from the right-hand side. Whenever the input is set to true, though, notice how the sand from the left and from the right basically annihilates, because this builder is building them into a sandstone, and we have a sandstone magnet collected by a crane into a dustbin, therefore not outputting any sand. So this output is not the input. 
You can also view the entire mechanism as an XOR gate if you treat this constant side as input number two. And that's basically all we need, guys. With the NOT gate and the AND gate, we have the NOR gate. And by combining NOR gates, you can achieve arbitrary logic relations. That, plus the assumption that Lighthouse can infinitely expand the size of the field, we reach the conclusion that Stacklands is Turing complete. Too bad Lighthouse effects are capped at 3 though.